Welcome back to my channel. Today, let's talk about how to sell greeting cards as a calligrapher. Now, in my last video about the 10 ways you can make money with calligraphy, I said that the easiest way to start off as a calligrapher with making money is to sell greeting cards. So let's dive deep into that today. I'll go over four things today. So whether or not you should do digital versus handmade, I'll also talk about sizing, pricing and how you should sell your cards. So let's get right into it. So a common question that I get from calligraphers is, should I sell handmade cards or should I sell digitally printed cards? And that is a great question because it really depends. With a digital card, it takes a lot less time because you only have to design it one time and then you send the design to a print shop and they print it for you. So after that, you don't have to do anything again. But with a handmade card, you can customize it to whatever your customer wants and it will take more time because you are creating each one by hand. So with the digital cards, when you print it at a print shop, you're probably gonna have to print a lot of them, like 20 or 30 or 50 or 100. And so make sure that when you are designing the cards that it isn't specific to the year. So don't write something like, happy holidays 2020, because if you don't sell all of them, then you can't sell them again the next year. So if you do print a digital design, make sure that it's not year specific. The other thing with handmade cards is that you can charge way higher because it's going to take you a lot more time and you're going to personalize each card. So this is something to keep in mind with the pricing. With digital cards, it's generally cheaper than buying a personalized handmade card. The other thing with handmade cards is that it's cheaper to make in general because you're probably going to be buying packs of cardstock or packs of watercolor paper. So each card might be just a couple of cents, but when you print it digitally, each card might cost anywhere from 50 cents to $2 for the printing cost. So keep that in mind when you are pricing and we will talk about price a little bit more later on today. So now that you've thought about what design you want to do, let's talk about sizing. What size should you make your cards? So there are three really common card sizes that I've seen in cards in North America. So the first one is a 4.25 times a 5.5 card, which fits into an A2 envelope. The next one is a four by six card, which fits into an A6 envelope. And unfortunately I don't have an example of that. And the last one is a five by seven card, which fits into an A7 envelope. So if you wanna compare the smallest one, the A2 with the A7, which is the larger one, here is the comparison. And these are very standard card sizes. And depending on the occasion, and what the client wants, you can decide on the card size. Maybe with occasions where people are sending out a lot of cards, they might want to send out some smaller cards, but if they're ordering a handmade card for a really special occasion, like someone's graduation or someone's wedding, then maybe they wanna opt for a bigger card size, like this five by seven card. So now that you've decided on the card size, what should you price the cards at? And pricing can be very complex, but in general, handmade cards will be more expensive than digitally printed cards because it just takes longer to make and you are customizing the card for the customer. So that's why it's more expensive. Generally in North America, if you go to any store, like a big brand name store or a specialty card store, you'll see that cards range anywhere from $1 to $10, with the average being around four to $6 for a nice card. And so when you're pricing your digitally printed cards, I would say that you can stick within that range. I sold these at $5 for one card or five cards for $20. And most people who bought from me actually bought the five pack for $20 because they save a little bit and it's for the holidays. So people usually want to send more than one card. So you can stay within that range. 
Now for handmade cards, the range could be anywhere from $5 to $50. It really depends on how much time you're taking, how complex it is, what are the materials you're using, what's the paper, and what your client wants. So just to give an example, when I had a really good friend who was having a major surgery, I really wanted to give her a special card. I got my friend who is an illustrator and does graphic design to make a cartoon card so that I could give it to my friend who's having the surgery. And for that card, I paid $25. Now, the reason why I was willing to pay that much is because I wanted to make something really, really special and give it to that friend. So generally when it comes to custom work and personalized cards, you can charge higher. But then again, you have to remember that if it's a simple design, maybe it's just a simple thank you or happy holiday. And if people are buying in bulk, then that would decrease the price because you're basically doing the same design over and over again and you're doing a lot of it. So you don't have to set things up over and over again. So with custom cards, the pricing is more complex and you really have to take into account all of these different factors. So now you might be thinking, okay, thanks Dina for helping me with the design, the sizing and the pricing. Now, how can I actually go and sell? Like who can I sell these cards to? So a great way to start is just posting on social media so your friends and family know that you're selling cards. Because trust me, I've done this and a lot of the people who were my first supporters were my friends and my family and they bought cards from me. Another thing that I did when I was selling cards was to pitch my cards directly to other small businesses in my city. So you can see this example here. This is an example of an Instagram direct message that I sent to a realtor in my city and I thought she was really cool. She's a really cool entrepreneur. She's doing a lot and I thought, hey, maybe she wants to buy my cards. Well, you never know if you don't try. So I sent this one message and not only did she buy 20 cards for me, but she also was super busy. So she asked me if I could write the inside message of each of the cards. So I was actually able to charge more on top of what the cards actually cost. So you can try this method out for yourself and see where it goes. And if you're thinking about where you should collect money and which platform you should use, then you have a couple of options. There is your own website, there is Etsy, but if you don't wanna go through the hassle of using a system like Etsy or setting something up for your own website, then a simple Google form will do. I've posted a Google form, I've sent it out to friends, and if they want to order, you know, you just get them to fill out their name, their address, how many cards, and then you can invoice them for that amount. Or if you decide to meet up with them and they wanna give you cash, then you can just take the cash when you meet up with them. The most important thing is to keep posting. I know for a lot of us, we as calligraphers find it really hard to put ourselves out there because we're scared of judgment and fear, but you have to do it. If you want to run a business successfully, the easiest and the fastest way to grow your business is to put yourself out there. And you can do this by starting small. You can tell five friends, that you're selling cards, you can see if they're interested, and then you can maybe post it on your Facebook or your Instagram, and you can just start off like that. You don't have to announce it to the world using a selfie video, right? You can just try things out slowly and build confidence along the way. So I hope this video was helpful. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Let me know if this was useful and if you're gonna be selling greeting cards this year. And if you're looking for more resources on how you can build a calligraphy business, click in the link in the description, sign up for 15 free training videos on a lot of different topics related to how to start a calligraphy business. So that's all for today and I'll see you in the next video.